This video is about orthogonality. Orthogonality is a very important principle in linear algebra as it defines a relationship between subspaces that can be very useful in many applications. This video will present the concept of orthogonality and some accompanying principles. To start things off, we will define the inner product. The inner product is something that is taken between two vectors so we'll call a vector u here, made up of the elements u1 through un, and a vector v, made up of v1 through vn. The inner product, also known as the dot product, is denoted by a dot between two vectors, and does the same thing as taking u transpose times v, which comes out to a single number which is defined as u1 v1 plus u2 v2 and so on until we multiply and add all of the elements of these two vectors and that gives us a single number called the inner product or the dot product. Also we can define the inner product geometrically as the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle in between them where once again the double lines around a vector means that that is their length. So if we have two vectors u and v and we have the angle in between them that's where this definition comes from. So the length of u is over here, length of v is here, and the angle theta is in between them. What we know from this geometric definition is that if u is perpendicular to v, that is the angle theta is equal to 90 degrees, then the dot product u dot v is equal to, again, by that definition, the two lengths times the cosine of the angle, 90 degrees, which is zero, so therefore this is zero. Something else we can see is that v dot v itself is the same thing as writing out their lengths multiplied times the cosine of zero. Since it's the same vector and the angle between them is zero degrees, and this means that the length of v is equal to the square root of v dot v since this is length of v squared and we have v dot v over here so we just take the square root of both sides and this if we write it out using our first definition over here the algebraic one is v1 squared plus v2 squared and so on up until vn squared. So this defines the length of a vector. And one more observation we can make is that the length of the difference between two vectors is going to be defined by the same kind of thing where now we replace each of these v's by v minus u. So therefore it's going to be the square root of v minus u dot v minus u. And if we write that out, we get the square root of each of the components difference squared and add all those together. And we get this as the di distance between two vectors. So altogether we have defined three important concepts here. The first one is orthogonality. Two vectors are orthogonal to each other or perpendicular if and only if their dot product, their inner product, is equal to zero that defines orthogonality. We've also shown the length 
of a vector which is defined as the square root of the dot product of the vector with itself and we've shown here the distance between two vectors that's over here and once again there's the square root of the dot product of their differences using these principles we can define the orthogonal complement of a subspace here is a definition of an orthogonal complement for a subspace W of Rn a vector Z is orthogonal to W if it is orthogonal to every vector in W the set of all vectors Z is called the orthogonal complement of W and is denoted by W with a superscript perpendicular sign also called W perp and W perp is a subspace of Rn so as an example suppose we have this as our subspace W and the orthogonal complement to this could be something like this vector here and this defines the orthogonal complement or W perp to this subspace W and this line has to pass through the zero vector because it is also a subspace of Rn and we recall from the subspace tutorial that a subspace must contain the zero vector and once again this line has to be orthogonal to the entire subspace W using orthogonal complements we can see something interesting about the matrix vector product that we have seen before specifically let's look at the product AX and let's write out an example matrix A a 2 by 3 matrix where each of the components is written out here and the vector X is also three components long in order for the dimensions to make sense so this product we can write it out comes out to this and this is nothing more than the dot product of row 1 of A with the vector X as the first row and the dot product of the second row of A with X as the second row now as you recall the null space of a matrix A is defined as all X's that map to 0 through the transformation A and therefore by AX equals 0 the homogeneous equation looking at what we just wrote over here we can see that what we get is that row 1 of A dot X and row 2 of A dot X have to both equal 0 in order to satisfy this homogeneous equation that means that in this case the rows of A are orthogonal to X since the dot product of each one has to equal zero and this generalizes to a matrix A of any size this will always hold for all the rows of A dot X so again we know that the rows of A define the subspace row A we also know that X such that AX equals 0 defines null A the null space of A and therefore from this we can see that the null space of A is actually the orthogonal complement of the row space of A and this relation also holds for A transpose so for this holds for any A so therefore it also holds for A transpose and therefore we can see that null of A transpose is equal to 
the orthogonal complement of the row space of A transpose. But the row space of A transpose is nothing more than the column space of A, since we just switched the rows with the columns. So therefore, we get this relation, and we see that the null space of the transpose of the matrix is the orthogonal complement of the column space of that matrix. Overall, we have seen how to define orthogonality using the inner product. We have also seen how to define length in any dimension using the inner product. In addition, we saw what an orthogonal complement to a subspace is, and we saw how the fundamental subspaces relate to each other in terms of orthogonality. In later videos, we will see how these concepts are used for more applications.